My name is Jeff Reynolds, and I'm here today to discuss with you Dollar General's new lift gate and the easy store method for loading and unloading your trailer. We've broken this down into a series of steps to assist you in the safest way to load and unload your trailer. Your trailer is equipped with a Waltco DGS-30 lift gate. The DGS-30 is rated at a maximum capacity of 3,000 pounds. Never exceed the rated capacity of the lift gate. When pulling a trailer that has a hydraulic lift gate attached, you must include several points of inspection to your existing pre-trip inspection. The lift gate is equipped with two 12 volt batteries and a self-contained charging system that is powered by your tractor. The system is charged through the green seven-way plug. This is known as the pigtail. It is vital that the pigtail is properly attached to the trailer prior to leaving the distribution center. This will ensure that your lift gate has power to operate once you have reached your destination. Turn the key to the on position or have the truck running and ensure that your truck and trailer is secure. Here is a list of inspection points. Check the pigtail for any apparent damage such as bent pins or exposed wires. Check for exposed wire leading to the pigtail receptacle. Check the hydraulic slider motor for any loose bolts and bent or missing guards. Check that the drive chains are tight and lubricated. Check under the lift for hydraulic fluid leaks. Check hydraulic hoses and fittings for leaks. Check the lift gate for any structural damage, wear, or missing decals. Check the transit safety hook and ensure it functions correctly. Check that the tandem slider stops are in place. Check the footstep and ensure that it is in the up position during transport. Locate the pump box. It is located directly behind the trailer tandems mounted to the lift gate. Within the pump box, you will need to check the following items. Check the fluid level. Check to make sure the green charge light is lit. Check the electrical wires and make sure the connections are tight and are grounded to the trailer. After checking all the lift gate components, we need to make sure that the lift gate is operational. Start by finding the outside control switches. They are located towards the rear of the trailer on the curbside. Rotate the transit latch handle in the direction indicated. While holding the handle in this position, activate the lower switch until the lift gate platform is within six inches of the ground on each side. Release the handle and activate the out switch until the lift gate is fully extended from under the trailer. As you operate the lift gate, verify that the LED indicator lights on the control switches illuminate in each switch position. Check to see if you notice any physical damage such as broken welds and scarring or leaks in the hydraulic cylinders. Unfold the aluminum deck extension and then unfold the loading ramps ensuring the ramps are securely fastened to the center block. Next, manually activate the cart stops with your foot. They should remain in the activated position once they are triggered. The car stops and the center block that secures the loading ramps sustain a lot of wear and tear. So it's imperative that you check these frequently, not just in your pre-trip inspection. While standing on the lift gate platform, check the welds securing the battery box. Remove the lid and check the battery cables and tie downs and be sure they are properly attached. Replace the battery box lid. While at the control switches, use the raise switch and raise the platform to the trailer floor. Be sure that the platform rests evenly against the rear of the trailer. Now lower the platform. To close and secure the platform, close the loading ramps first. Then close the aluminum gate extension so that the loading ramps remain folded under. With the lift gate no more than six inches above the ground on each end, Return the lift gate to the fully retracted position using the end switch. While the lift gate platform is being positioned under the trailer, ensure that the snubber bar rotates onto the aluminum gate extension. Then activate the raise switch until the lift gate is tight against the up stops. When properly stored, the transit latch pin will automatically engage the latch hook and the latch handle will be in the vertical position. Never lower your lift gate into the transit hook. Make sure that the lift gate is in the powered up position while transporting your trailer at all times. 
We recommend that you padlock both trailer doors before leaving the distribution center. The reason we recommend that you put a padlock on both trailer doors is to prevent any unauthorized person from opening up your trailer. While en route, the load could shift and a skilled easy store driver could determine if there's a safety risk and prevent injury. Now that our pre-trip is complete, let's move on to our destination. Now that we've arrived at our destination, we need to meet with the store manager to determine the best place to unload. Make sure that you have the available workspace and room to place the roll tainers in the storage area. Once a good spot has been established, survey the area for low hanging branches, power lines, debris, or any type of obstacle that would pose a danger to you or your truck. Remember. It's very important that the front of your trailer is not higher than the back of your trailer. We don't recommend that you unload in that situation. If you need to position your truck and trailer a little bit farther away and push the roll tenders that extra distance to maintain a safe work environment, then do it. If you have any questions, contact your fleet manager. When positioning your trailer, maintain a 20-foot safety zone. Objects or persons should not be within 20 feet of the rear or sides of the trailer. At all costs, never assume that your area is clear. If at any time you are unsure of the area behind your vehicle, get out and look before performing your backing procedure. When you are certain that you have positioned your truck in the safest and most optimum position for unloading, secure your truck by installing your air cuff locks and locking your truck doors. To maintain a fully charged liftgate system, Determine how much charging time has taken place. A guide to follow would be, if your first stop was less than 200 miles from the distribution center, let your truck idle at 800 RPMs during the entire delivery process. If it was more than 200 miles to your first destination, go ahead and turn your truck off before unloading. With a secure truck, the store manager can now remove the seal. You are now ready to remove the padlocks and open the trailer doors. When opening your trailer doors, it is good practice to stand behind the right side door. This allows you to use the door as a shield and prevents you from being injured in case of falling freight. If at any time anyone comes into that 20 foot safety zone, stop immediately and do not continue until that zone is cleared. Secure the doors to the side of the trailer and then identify if you have toppers that need to be removed prior to the safe removal of the first row of roll tainers. If this is the case, have a U-boat and the step stool in a safe location to allow for the removal of this product. You also need to break down any empty roll tainers that have not been broken down by the store employees. Also, place any empty totes into an empty roll tainer if the store personnel have not already done so. Now you should be ready to operate your lift gate. Locate your raised lower switch because the first thing that we want to do is to lower the platform about six inches above the ground. Make sure that your area is clear before you slide the platform out. Following the same operational procedure as in the pre-trip inspection, use the proper switches to slide the platform out from under the trailer and then lower it to the ground. With the liftgate platform resting on the ground, unfold the aluminum deck extension. You should always put your work gloves on before you do this. This protects your hands from sharp or burry edges. While standing at the curbside of the lift gate, grab the platform handle with your left hand while bracing yourself against the trailer with your right hand. Then rotate the platform to the open position. With the platform on the ground in the open position, unfold the two loading ramps and make sure the cart stops are in the lowered position. We can now load our U-boats and step stool onto the platform surface and raise the platform to the trailer floor. If the trailer is fully loaded to the trailer doors, only utilize one U-boat until there is a sufficient amount of space to maneuver safely. 
Locate the inside control switches on the curbside wall of the trailer and find your standing position on the platform. Make sure you have a good footing and a wide stance. Be sure that no part of your body, especially your feet, are hanging over the edge of the platform surface. It is good to have steel-toed footwear with a non-slip sole surface so that you don't slip and fall. As the platform gets worn or covered in ice, snow, or mud, it can create a slippery surface. Do not attempt to move while the platform is in motion. This could lead to serious personal injury. Raise the platform using the inside control switch while holding on to the U-boats, restricting them from movement. At all times, be sure that the lift platform is flush to the trailer full before entering the trailer. Before unloading the roll tainers, you want to remove the top. These products are loaded above the roll tainers to ensure the maximum amount of cube space in the trailer is utilized. The product is typically large and lightweight. Always be sure that the weight of the box is not more than you can lift. Always keep a good stance when you are reaching above your head to remove the items. Guide the material out and down. If an object is too heavy or is in a hard to reach area that could cause you injury removing it, do not attempt to remove it. Use the step stool when one is available and place it in a central location. Simply climb up the stool and obtain the topper. Climb down the stool and place it on the U-boat. Repeat this process only until the bottom layer of the U-boat is full. Then remove the toppers while remaining on the stool until the roll tainers are unobstructed or until the U-boat is full. When the U-boat is full, place it on the platform in the far left position. This will allow you to maintain control of it as the platform gets lowered. In the situation of a fully loaded trailer, only remove one fully loaded U-boat at a time until one full row of roll tainers have been removed. If this is not the case, you will find one of the advantages of the Easy Store method is that you can save a significant amount of time during your stops by taking multiple U-boats into the trailer during every upcycle. Another time saving technique is do not downstack the freight. When unloading toppers, load it directly onto the U-boat. You can save yourself an average of 30 minutes per stop by practicing this procedure. You now have your area clear above the roll tainers, so let's scan the area for any potential safety threats. Wheels. Check for chips and floor debris that could cause potential problems. Objects within the roll tanners protruding through the sides that could restrict your movement. You should double check that the safety zone is clear before continuing with any of the unloading process. Then you want to release the straps and remove the roll tanners from the high side of the trailer first if the trailer is not level from side to side. Firmly grab each side of the roll tanner and using the nose to toes method keeping your back straight, one foot behind the other, and keeping your body square, arms extended, use your body weight to pull at a steady rate. Once the roll tanner is in an open area that allows for maximum maneuverability, position a roll tanner so that the narrow wheels roll onto the platform first. If the roll tanners are loaded to the very back of the trailer, only put two roll tanners on the platform to ensure your safety. Otherwise, we suggest that you place three on the platform and place them in order from right to left, putting the lightest roll tainer in the far left position. There are three cart stops that automatically activate as the wheels pass over them. The roll tainer should be maneuvered to roll over only a single cart stop. If while loading roll tainers onto the platform you accidentally activate an adjacent cart stop, place it back in the lower position by stepping on it prior to loading the next roll tainer. To maximize production, take the approach of placing any equipment on the platform as it becomes available. If there is a fully loaded U-boat, you may place it in the far left position on the platform in place of a roll tainer. During this situation, it is better to load one side of the U-boat with heavier items to counterbalance the weight that is not resting on the platform surface. Make sure you have a good footing, a wide stance, and your standing position should be behind the left roll tainer or U-boat. This gives you control of the lightest unit and keeps you safe from the remaining two units. Using the inside control switch you are now ready to lower the platform. With the platform resting fully on the ground you must disengage the cart stops in order to remove the roll tainers. To disengage the cart stop get a firm grip on the roll tainer or U-boat, pull back slightly and step on the cart stop to put it in the lowered position. As the rear wheels of the roll tainer roll over the cart stop, 
they will reactivate it into the raised position. To avoid having to step over the cart stop as you guide the rotator off the platform, keep your foot position on the cart stop as a safety measure. Push the rotator or U-boat off of the platform surface and maneuver it into the desired store location. Unload the remaining units in the same fashion and place them in the desired store location. When the rotators are broken down, you can nest them together using the shopping cart method. Maximize your time by loading your empties as space in the trailer becomes available. After the center rotator has been removed, nest two rotators together and maneuver them nose first onto the platform. Manually activate the cart stop and pull back slightly, resting the wheels against it, preventing cart shifting. Once the third and final rotator is removed, follow the same procedure. If a U-boat is needed, you may place it in the far left position, allowing you to control it as you raise the platform. After everything is in position, make sure you have a good footing, wide stance, and make sure your safety zone is clear before you raise the lift. If you have a U-boat on your lift, remove it and place it in a safe location inside the trailer. When you maneuver the empty roll tanners, place yourself about halfway on the platform with a wide stance. Firmly grab the back of the roll tanners and swing the high end around using the narrow end resting against the cart stop as a pivot point. Once the roll tanner is inside the trailer, you must swing it around again to make sure that the narrow base be pointed towards the nose of the trailer. Make sure that you place them at least 10 to 15 feet from the rear of the trailer. Remember to have 10 to 15 feet from the end of the trailer before you start processing the empty roll tanners in the upcycle. This will ensure that you have an adequate amount of space to work safely. Dollar General has developed an easy and very effective way of securing your roll tanners for transport using a specifically engineered securement system called Capture Track. The Capture Track system is comprised of five components a securement strap, the E track, a torque limited breakaway ratchet, a securement strap sleeves, and ratchet hangers. The first thing we want you to remember is not to attempt to nest more than 10 of the empty roll tanners when you utilize the capture track securement system. Next, we want you to remember that the narrow end of these roll tanners needs to be facing towards the front of the trailer. The E-clip securement strap is attached at the wall by a 12 inch cable connected to a sliding T-bar that can run the entire length of the trailer. This system was engineered to ensure that the securement devices would always be available and in your trailer at all times. Each strap is divided into two sections. They connect at the torque limited breakaway ratchet and the ratchet connection hook. First you need to lock the E-clipped end into the E-track rail. Now let's connect the two sections together in the center. When locking these two connection devices together, it is important that you attach the connection hook to the center bar directly adjacent to the flat metal surface. This will not work. This will not work. And this will not work. It has to be in this position. It will be opposite the flat end of the ratchet hook. Once it is attached, you can pull the excess strap through the ratchet spindle, tightening the connected unit. With the strap tight, torque the ratchet until you have enough tension in the strap to restrict the roll tanners from movement. A strap sleeve is sewn around each section and is used to prevent wear and tear from sharp edges where the strap comes into contact with the roll tanners. When the securement straps are not being used, you can attach them to the wall using the ratchet hangers. When you're securing the empty roll tanners and you're utilizing a blue Warner strap, do not attempt to nest more than 15. The Warner strap is only one unit and only needs to be connected to the walls on each end before removing excess length and applying torque to the ratchet. Ensure there is enough tension in the strap to properly restrict the empty roll tanners from movement. To properly store your lift gate for transit, complete the following steps. Using the yellow platform handle, lift the platform off the ground and fold the two loading ramps over into the stored position. 
Then fold the platform into the transit position. Make sure that the loading ramps remain folded under the aluminum deck extension. With the lift gate no more than 6 inches above the ground, return the lift gate to the fully retracted position using the end switch. Activate the raise switch until the lift gate is tight against the upstops, ensuring that the transit latch has engaged. Make sure that the lift gate remains in the powered up position while you transport your truck and trailer. Here is a list of things that you should always do to ensure your safety while performing easy store duties. A proper vehicle inspection that includes lift inspection points. Wear the proper clothing, such as gloves and steel toe boots. Lift with proper balance and support. Be certain your 20 foot safety zone is clear at all times during the delivery process. Carefully open the trailer doors to avoid being hit by loose falling freight. Make sure that the cart stops are in proper working order at all times to ensure that the roll tanners do not roll off the end of the lift gate. Keep area clear of debris and objects preventing you from maneuvering your roll tanners. These are things that you should never do. Never move on the lift while the lift is in operation. Never put your feet next to the trailer while the lift is going up to avoid injuring your feet. Never place yourself in positions that could injure your back. Never remove toppers if you cannot reach them. Never roll out more than two roll tanners when you first begin unloading a fully loaded trailer. Never lift objects that are too heavy. Never nest an amount of roll tanners exceeding the securement strap specifications. Never try to catch a roll tanner if it is tipping over. From all of us at the Warner Dollar General dedicated team, We'd like to thank you for your time. We hope that this video has been educational and informative. If you have any questions, please contact your Easy Store coach or captain or your fleet manager. And remember, be safe.